Yo, what's going on, you guys? Already know my name is Jay Strozier. It's the second video of the year, and I am 100% going to be consistent all year. I often find myself thinking very deeply about some of the simplest things in life, and when I'm in those moments of me thinking very deeply about some of the simplest things in life, I realize that a lot of the things I'm thinking about make little to no sense at all. So I'm gonna be talking about three of the things that I want you guys to try to make sense to me, and I'm gonna be trying to make it make sense that it doesn't make sense to you guys. Anyway, let's get into it. al Khwarizmi, the father of algebra. Pythagoras and the Pythagorean theorem. Albert Einstein and the theory of relativity. Hipparchus, the father of trigonometry. My main question is, how do these people know that they're right? Because it's not like these people were Katherine Johnson and they were coming up with little mathematical equations because they had to launch a rocket ship into outer space. A lot of that type of math was just theories, concepts, and ideas. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, ratios, and percentages, that type of math I find useful because I use it every single day of my life. I still have yet to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared in an everyday life situation. Now I'm pretty sure I can go on Google and do the research about why those people came up with those mathematical concepts and why they needed to use them and all. But even if I do that, it doesn't change the fact that most of that math is literally made up and it's like abstract. Even measurements that we use every day are made up. Inches, yards, feet, centimeters, kilometers, cups, ounces, all that stuff. We use it, but it's made up because who came up with it? Who was the person that said, you know what? From this point to this point, we're gonna call that an inch. From that rock right there to that rock, we're gonna call that a mile. How do you know that 5,280 feet are in a mile? How do you know that four quarts is in a gallon? We use those measurements to build stuff and you know, give people medicine, but it's lit like it's made up. I'm not saying that math is not real and that math does not exist and that math is dumb. I'm just saying that a lot of this abstract math that we have to learn in school, we do not use on a daily basis. I know people doing calculus and stuff like that. Dog, why are you having to do, like, that doesn't make any, that doesn't make any sense. That's what we should do to calculus, just <laughs> drop it. I do know that some people have to learn that ridiculously high level math because they will use it, but the average person does not do it. That's all I'm trying to say. The older I get, the more I feel like I'm being trapped within a simulation. Whenever you go to work, church, school, or any other social setting where you see people that you don't know very well or that you don't know at all, you typically say, Hey, how's it going? And they typically say, Hey, how's it going? And then you keep walking. One individual greeted and asked the question while the other individual that is supposed to be responding greeted and asked the question again. That's an incomplete conversation with no actual intention. Okay, let's look at it a different way. When I go to work, one of my managers or coworkers will say, you know, hey Jay, how's it going? And then what I say is usually, I'm doing good, I'm feeling brilliant, feeling extravagant today. I typically spew out what I'm supposed to say or I exaggeratedly say what I'm supposed to say. And the same thing happens the other way around. No disrespect to anybody, but I question if either of us genuinely care about the well-being of each other when we ask how is it going? We're simply just saying what we're supposed to say in this environment of the simulation of the workspace. If people were to say how they were actually feeling in the moment where they say they are doing good, it would probably go something like this. Oh, hey, colleague, how are you? Uh, not very good. I'm tired of having to come to this job and you know pick up extra hours so I can make a unreasonable amount of money to live off of. And you know, I have a lot of books I gotta purchase for school and then- Yeah, man, that's, that's life for you. Um, go ahead and clock in because I need that list done by 2.30, so you know. Chop, chop. Do you see how we are saying things and answering with things that we don't really mean? And lastly, like the phrase, have a good day. I feel like it would be better to say, I hope you have a good day or I hope you have a good weekend or something. Because how do you have a good day if you're not having a good day? If someone's having a bad day and you say, have a good day, how do they have a good day? Like, do they have a good day? Like they have a cookie, like they just go and take it or something like that. Like, I know it sounds stupid, but when you think about what you're saying, you realize, hmm, I probably shouldn't say that. I probably should word my sentence differently. I think I may feel very strongly about this is because most of the time the social interaction that I have is that that false flat by social interaction. I really dislike this feeling of being in a simulation, knowing that you're in a simulation, but having no way to escape it in a sense. I know I sound like a weirdo, like I'm just thinking and thinking about nothingness, but like, I'm just gonna move on to the next segment. Okay, before I get into the last segment, I need you guys to go ahead and like this video because I wanna hit 20, five likes on the video because last time we hit 26. Also subscribe to the channel because my goal is to upload 30 videos this year, which means I'm going to be extremely consistent and you guys need to keep up. So if you do not do that, I will send Leo to attack you. So subscribe and like the video. It is very hard for me to believe that that woman existed. Well, I mean, obviously she existed because we have picture and video evidence of her existence. But somebody has to be lying about her condition and or achievements. Helen Keller went blind, deaf, and mute at nine months old. 
In the year 2021, do you know what the prognosis is for a person who goes blind, deaf, and mute at nine months of age? They say that they most likely won't be able to learn anything because they have zero way of communicating and zero way of intaking any information. They also say that these individuals most likely will just have a bunch of violent and emotional outbursts and be a danger to themselves and other people due to 100% complete distortion. So if that's the prognosis now, what in the flying flippers was the prognosis 140 years ago in 1881? Don't you think those doctors would have been like, yep, this little nine month old girl is better off dead. We should probably just take her out of her misery. Well, according to history, this woman went on to learn sign language, learn Latin, French, German, and two other languages which aren't documented, learn how to read and write in braille, received a bachelor's degree, published 12 books, and among a plethora of other things that she did, she most impressively flew a plane. How does a blind, deaf, and mute person learn how to fly a plane? That does not make any sense to me, and this seems quite impossible. Also, do you know how you have that voice in your head that says things like, Oh, I forgot my mask in the car. I should probably go this way because they're doing construction that way and I don't want to be late. How do you have that voice in your head if you've gone blind, deaf, and mute and have trouble speaking? Like, Pella Keller's a real person, but something is not adding up. That's all I have to say. All right, y'all, this video is ending. Please comment some things that did not make sense or things that you agree with me that don't make sense because I want to know what y'all's view of the world is and I want to know what y'all's view of some of these topics are. Also, remember to follow me on Instagram if you are curious about the life of Jay Strozier. And as always, remember to stay productive and don't act stupid. They used to laugh cause I ain't had a jar This cause I took all my cash and I put that in record And even though I had a stash I knew I could afford them Never care about the flash I guess I care more about God